Ladies and gentlemen, I'm speaking to you from a typical American home in Hyannisport, Massachusetts. Since January of 1960, this family of smiling and happy people have undergone a change. You might say they've been engaged in a new and different type of experiment. Sir, as head of this average family, what was this new experience undergone by you and the members of your household? Well, after uh, two years of brushing with the Crest toothpaste, our group... <laughs> our group had 21% uh, fewer cavities with Crest. This shows a uh, rate of uh, economic growth, and therefore, it is not with uh, too much concern that I say a uh, raise from uh, 25 to 35 is not completely out of accord when compared with the uh, current uh, financial deficit on hand. Now, I trust that answers your uh, question about your weekly allowance, Caroline. <laughs> uh, next, uh, next question. Yes, I should like to ask a question about... Would you uh, stand, please? <laughs> I should like to ask a question about... Would you identify yourself, please? <laughs> I'm your wife. <laughs> I should like to ask the following question. No, speak English, Jackie. <laughs> I noticed that you didn't touch your salad, either at dinner tonight or at dinner last night. Would you tell us why, please? Well, let me say this about that. Now, number one, in my opinion, the uh, fault does not lie as much with the salad as it does with the uh, dressing being used on the salad. Now, let me say that I have nothing against the dairy industry. However, I would prefer... I would prefer it if in the, if in the future we uh, stuck to coleslaw. Next... <laughs> Next question. Uh, yes, the uh, baby in the back row, uh, baby John. <laughs> well, I, uh, I believe I answered that, uh, that question at dinner last night. <laughs> now, if you, if you remember, here is what I said at that time. Oh, dee wa dee ba dee bitty doo dee wa dee da Goody wada woo. Yes, uh, next uh, question. Yes, I should like to ask a question regarding the daily bath. Identify yourself, please. I'm the house nurse. All right, uh, nurse. Uh, <laughs> move ahead uh, with your question. Well, there seems to be some confusion as to the toys to be taken into the bathtub. Now, Caroline's toys are getting mixed up with John's. And I should like to know once and for all whose toys are who. Yes, well, let me make a judgment about that now. <laughs> The uh, following toys have been appropriated for tub use. 18 PT boats, three, uh, three Yogi Bear uh, beach balls, two Howdy Doody plastic uh, bouncing clowns, a ball of uh, silly putty, and a rubber swan. Now, let me make a uh, judgment on the dispersal of these items. Nine of the PT boats, two of the Yogi Bear uh, beach balls, the uh, ball of silly putty belong to uh, Caroline. Nine of the PT boats, one of the Yogi... Uh, Bear uh, beach balls and the uh, two howdy doody plastic bouncing clowns are baby John's. The rubber swan is mine. <laughs> next, uh, the next question. Your wife, and in regard to our grocery bill. I think the food prices for this house are way out of control. Would you care to comment on that? Yes, let me say this about that. Now, I noticed the other night we had the King Shard and all of his wives to dinner, and you served the uh, 79 cent spread instead of margarine. <laughs> now, I think you overlooked a considerable saving there because you really can't tell the difference between margarine and the higher price spread. And believe me, if you can, uh, King Shard can't. Uh, time for uh, one uh, final question. Me, me. I had my hand up first. You did not. I had my hand up first. You did not, first. Caroline. I, I had my hand up first. You did not. I have my hand up no, first. No, I want uh, I want you youngsters to uh, stop fighting uh, among yourselves. So go ahead, Bobby. I uh, think you were first. <laughs> Well, 
Well, I, I should like to uh, straighten out the... Would you stand, uh, please, Bob? I, I would like to discuss yesterday's uh, touch football game with you. Now, on three uh, different occasions, I was tackled. Once by uh, Senator Dirksen, once by uh, uh, Senator Goldwater, and once by uh, Mr. Hoffa. Now, as Attorney General, I can tell you that a, uh, a tackle in uh, a touch football is illegal, and you should uh, have called a penalty. Yes, Bob, uh, you are the Attorney General. But when you play here, you play by my rules, or you don't play at all. <laughs> and I guess you know why. Uh, why? Because it's my ball, that's why. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes, sir? The Malayan ambassador for dinner. One moment, sir. The Milan ambassador for dinner. The Milan ambassador for dinner. <laughs> the Milan ambassador for dinner. Daddy, it's the Milan ambassador for dinner. Tell him it's tomorrow night. just too much family. Can't we ever get away alone? Well, tomorrow. I, I promise tomorrow we'll go away together uh, tomorrow. No more family for a while now, I promise. Now, uh, turn off the light. Good night, Jackie. Good night, Jack. Good night, Bobby. Good night, Ethel. <laughs> Good night, Jack. Good night, Teddy. Good night, Peter. Good night, Pat. Now, Cooper, we're here to prepare you, so pay attention. You've only got a few minutes. Grissom here and Glenn and Carpenter and Shepard and Shira have all been through this, so uh, they can fill you in. Glenn? Well, Coop, it's the start that's the problem. Uh, you've got to relax. The initial force takes over, and then all you have to do is guide. Uh, Shira, you had a little trouble with the suit. Why don't you tell Coop about it? Well, uh, I figured that the suit was too loose. Uh, I'd recommend making sure of a really snug fit. Uh, Carpenter? Uh, the most important thing is not to panic when you fall in the water. Just settle down and wait, and somebody will be sure to pick you up. You got it, Coop? Well, I'm, I'm grateful for the advice, fellas, but to tell you the honest truth, I'm scared. But you all went through it, so I guess I can. Good boy, Coop. Now, you ready? Ready, Mr. Webb. Okay, now get down to the dock and put on your water skis. Jackie's waiting. <laughs> Yes, sir. Uh, fill her up, please. Uh, just uh, this car? No, uh, all 70 of them and the... Uh, <laughs> and the uh, motorcycles. Yes, sir. Uh, by the way, do you uh, give uh, green stamps? No, no, sir, we don't. Forget it. Mr. Pablo Casals. How do you do, Mr. Casals? Hello, Pablo. Welcome. Mr. Leonard Bernstein. How do you do, uh, Mr. Bernstein? Hello, Leonard. Nice of you to come. Dr. Albert Schweitzer. How do you do, doctor? Hello, Albert. Hope you had a nice trip. <laughs> Jackie. Yes? Why is it always your friends? <laughs> uh, 
Good evening. This is Charles Collingsworth at the White House in Washington, D.C. For many of you, this will be your first visit to this historical landmark. Our tour through these hallowed halls will be conducted by the First Lady. Good evening, Charles. Good evening. Shall we begin here in the West Wing? Yes. If your cameras will just move through these oak panel doors over here on our left, we will be in the Calvin village. <laughs> was named after our 35th president. I can't help but wish your cameramen had opened the doors before they moved their heavy cameras through them. The doors, incidentally, were a gift from Mrs. R.C. Greenleaf of Raleigh, North Carolina. They were made out of solid oak, and up until a few seconds ago, they stood over 15 feet high. They were lovely. Now we are approaching the Thomas Jefferson room, which I think you'll find rather interesting. President Jefferson used to come into this room and sit for hours just gazing out the window at the White House lawn. The White House lawn was a gift from Mrs. W.C. Ridgway <laughs> of Hollyhock, Virginia. The President and I decided to leave it just the way it was originally. It's lovely. This football, which has just come crashing through the $5,000 President McKinley French windows, belongs to the current president, who, of course, is also my husband. He's lovely. <laughs> now we're entering the President Grant drawing room, which I think you'll find rather interesting. We decided to leave this room just the way it was when President Grant left office. I do notice a lot of dust on the furniture in here. Yes. And that dust was a gift from Mrs. E.C. <laughs> Landon of Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania. <laughs> now, if you'd care to follow me down this hall to the next room, as we go, I should like to point out the various paintings on the wall. Yes, I wish you would point them out. Well, there's this one and this one. <laughs> And that great big one over there. And this little teeny one down here. <laughs> and finally this one over here. Thank you for pointing them out. <laughs> What's in this room over here? I believe we are standing in front of the President Monroe Conference Room. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling. Oh, my darling Clementine. <laughs> It's so easy to get confused. It's such a big house. <laughs> now I believe straight ahead of us is the blue room. Yes, this is the blue room. We decided to leave it just the way President Blue had it originally. <laughs> now we are in the east wing. This is the section we are having completely remodeled. All the rooms are being changed around. Yes, the carpenters certainly are busy, aren't they? Aren't they, though? And those carpenters were a gift from Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Al Bianchi of Hayworth, New Jersey. I find it quite easy to get lost in this section. Yes, I imagine one could get lost in here. Pardon me, pardon me. I seem to have uh, made the uh, wrong turn somewhere. Now, I'm trying to uh, find the bedroom. I just came out of the uh, John Hancock bathroom where I was uh, taking a shower in the Alexander Hamilton bathtub. And I think the that... The carpenters uh, and painters here have been just the, uh, working uh, like beavers around the, the clock. We <laughs> hope... Middle. We hope to have it finished Which in way May, is he? The bedroom. The bedroom is where? Actually, the original schedule didn't call I for it to be completed until July. But the work has gone I, I should like to point out that I am... A, 
I am, uh, I am standing here in my shorts, uh, dripping wet. Now, I've, uh, <laughs> I've got an important conference in uh, 15 minutes, so I must be dressed in uh, 10 minutes, which means I shall have to uh, move ahead uh, toward our bedroom with great vigor. Excuse me, Charles. Here, go down this hall to the Andrew Jackson smoking room, then turn right into the President Taft rumpus room, I'll cross over through the Woodrow Wilson ping pong room, then left at the Dolly Madison pinnacle room, <laughs> through the President Grant drinking room, past the Richard Nixon dumbwaiter. <laughs> And that's our room. Well, let's see. Now I go past the uh, D Dolly Madison ping pong room, across the uh, Richard Nixon the drinking room, and then I go left with the Andrew Jackson. Room. Uh, wasn't that your husband? Yes, it was. He's a magnificent-looking man. Yes, and we decided to leave him just the way he was originally. Incidentally, he was a gift. That's nice. <laughs> uh, we return to that last two years. The following is a public service announcement. Election day is near. Go to the polls and vote. Vote for the Kennedy of your choice, but vote. <laughs> Do you really think you can get away with this? Well, oh, Pierre, I've uh, been criticized in the newspapers for the big parties and the uh, state dinners. Now, we've got to cut down and economy starts at home. Uh, all right, if you say so. Oh, here they are. All right, uh, gentlemen, uh, let us be seated. Uh, Mr. Adenauer, if uh, you will sit uh, next to your uh, friend, Mr. De Gaulle. And uh, Mr. Uh, Castro, if you will sit here next to your friend, Mr. Khrushchev. Mr. Uh, Nasha, if you will sit here next to uh, Mr. Ben-Gurion. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, sh I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Nkrumah. If you will sit in between Mr. Ben-Gurion and Mr. Nasha, then uh, <laughs> you can uh, turn either way. Now, uh, Mr. Uh, Shankai Shek, would you uh, please uh, sit there beside Mr. Khrushchev? Oh, good. Now, uh, before we get down to the business at hand, I think lunch would be in order. Now, I thought that instead of the uh, formal food we usually serve here, that we would have a uh, typical American uh, businessman's lunch. So I'm going to send down to the delicatessen store for uh, some sandwiches. Well, how does that, uh, how does that strike you, gentlemen? Uh, 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 Mr. Khrushchev, Mr. Khrushchev, would you... Uh, I appreciate your enthusiasm, but would you mind uh, just taking your shoe off the table? <laughs> now, I think uh, I'll have a uh, peanut butter and jelly on whole wheat with a uh, side order of a uh, coleslaw and a hot fudge uh, sundae. Uh, Mr. De Gaulle? Yuck. <laughs> I would like to have dove under glass. Well, I'm uh, sorry, General, but uh, we're only having sandwiches today. Then could I have a dove under glass sandwich? All right, uh, Pierre, a uh, chicken salad on white for the general. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sh <laughs> Shankai Shek. Uh, club sandwich would be fine. Thank you so much. Would you like it with a uh, little mayo? Please, not to mention that name. Uh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Mr. Uh, Nasa. I'll have a hot pastrami sandwich. I can never get it at home. Okay. <laughs> what, uh, what kind of bread? White toast with lettuce and uh, mayonnaise. Uh, Mr. Nasser. What do you want, Ben-Gurion? Look, I, I know we don't get along. You never listen to me. Now you're fooling around with rockets. But this time, please listen. Pastrami don't go with white bread and lettuce and mayonnaise. <laughs> Have it on rye bread with mustard and a glass tea you'll enjoy. <laughs> I think that, uh, I think that Mr. Uh, Ben-Gurion has a point there. All right, All right. I I'll, I'll take a chance. Good boy. And if you like pastrami, next time you're in my neighborhood, drop into the house. My wife makes like a filter fish. It melts in your mouth. We'll have to get together, Mr. Ben-Gurion. 
My name is Ben Gurion. You can call me Ben. My name is Abdul Nasser. You can call me Abe. <laughs> Good. Now, uh, that's fine. Mr. Uh, Mr. Khrushchev. Oh, you don't have to order special for me. I'll have a bite of everybody else's. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Uh, Adenauer. You have one sandwich here in America I love. I have a Western sandwich. If Adenauer has a Western sandwich, then I'll have an Eastern sandwich. There is uh, no Eastern sandwich. Then I want the Eastern portion of his Western sandwich. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm uh, sure I'm sure we can uh, negotiate on that subject. Uh, Mr. Castro. No pregunte qué su patria puede hacer para usted. Pero pregunte qué usted puede hacer para su patria. I have a chicken sandwich with a live chicken. <laughs> well, uh, well, that leaves uh, Mr. Ren uh, Krumah. What will you have, sir? I'll have some watermelon. Don't put me on, Mr. Nagrumah. <laughs> All right, all right. A ham and egg sandwich and a Coke. And I guess a bowl of borscht. Okay, okay, uh, Pierre, uh, put the rush on it. Well, gentlemen, that was a uh, pleasant lunch. Now, uh, under discussion today will be nuclear disarmament, followed by the UN bond issue and a uh, matter of the trade agreements. Now, first, there is a most important matter to settle. Uh, Mr. De Gaulle, yours was the chicken salad and coffee. That's $1.40. <laughs> uh, uh, well, what do you say, Dexon? Will you make up your mind? Well, sir... I think that two million is much too much. However, sir, I do think that the residual benefits to be derived from this project would more than compensate, sir, for the original outlay of funds. I see. Uh, Mr. Roshka, what do you think? Well, sir, I do not go along with Mr. Dexon. The residual benefits are beside the point. It's a dangerous move. I'd like to say something if I might. Must you, Lyndon? <laughs> think that either Mr. Rusk or Mr. Johnson here have the right, sir, to advise in this particular matter. I do believe, sir, that the decision is up to you. And if I may say so, you are holding things up. I think this truly calls for an immediate decision on your part, sir. Ev, uh, you drive a hard bargain. <laughs> but, uh, okay, here's what I'll do. I'll sell you a boardwalk in Park Place <laughs> with a few hotels on it. Halt! Who goes there? Oh, it's you. Go right ahead. Hold it, hold it. Where are you going? Oh, oh. oh I'm sorry. I... I didn't recognize you, sir. Hey, no one is admitted beyond... Oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know it was you. Yes? Oh, it's, it's you. What is it? Can Caroline come out and play? <laughs> I'm uh, sorry, young man, but she can't. She's in Italy with her mother. Now down onto the floor for this week's press conference. Yes, well, there is no uh, opening statement. I think I will just take the uh, first question. Clark Smedley, Washington Daily Herald. Uh, sir, would you comment on the African situation, please? Well, no, I, I'm not up to date on that. <laughs> no, uh, 
I sent a uh, personal representative to Africa uh, some months ago. So far, she hasn't even dropped me a card. <laughs> yes. Uh, Arlo Sievers, National and International Post, Dispatch, and Farm Bulletin, Weekly Morning Press, Gazette, and Daily Bugle. Have a heart. Let me say this about that now. Uh, <laughs> Dynasty. Well, they're false. Now, I don't believe in those charges, and neither does my uh, brother Bobby nor my uh, brother Genghis. <laughs> uh, yes. Sir, we understand that on the spot nuclear inspection might not be necessary. Do you have a new way that we can tell what the Russians are doing without actual on the spot inspection in the Soviet Union? Yes, we are asking everyone to uh, be very, very quiet. <laughs> You in the uh, flowered hat. Yes, I'd like to. Uh, not you, sir, the, uh, the lady behind you. Sir? Yes? When will we send a man to the moon? Whenever uh, Senator Goldwater wants to go. <laughs> Would you like your son to be president? Definitely not. I think he should finish school first. <laughs> Yes. What are you going to do about the medical care for the aging? Try to stay young. <laughs> I think we have time for one uh, final question. Yeah. Yes. Now that you're in office, what do you think the chances are for a Jewish president? Well, I think they're uh, pretty good. Now, let me say, I don't see why a, a person of the uh, Jewish faith can't be president of the United States. I know as a uh, Catholic, I could never vote for him, but other than that... <laughs> I worked three months on the creation of this dress. I believe, uh, how you say, madame, it is you. Uh, a Jacques original for you. Eh? Ah, merci, Jacques. Très bien. I believe you're right, Jacques. I like it. It has a very distinctive air about it, and yet it is conservative. I like it. Ah, you make me so happy. I have thought and thought, and I have decided to name this after you, the first lady. Eh? Merci, Jacques. Yeah. I don't like to tell an artist what to do, but I wondered, would you mind if I made one small change? Could you remove the top button? Ah, madame, a wonderful idea. Of course, that is the touch you needed. Mm, merci. I think I'll wear it tonight to the embassy ball. Au revoir, Jacques. Oh, madame, madame, you make me so happy. Mm, Mrs. G. Rip the top button off those 5,000 first ladies and put them on a rack. Posh me the uh, magazine section of the Times. I'm doing the puzzle, darling. Well, then uh, give me the uh, book review section. Here you are. Isn't it nice being here alone on a Saturday night? Just the two of us for change? That's what you said last Saturday and the uh, Saturday before that and the uh, Saturday before that. Uh, you want to see a movie? Fine. There's a wonderful abstract Swedish picture playing. I knew you'd say that. <laughs> I know where there's a good Italian movie playing, seeing as how you uh, like foreign films. Wonderful. Which one? Hercules, starring uh, Steve Reeves. <laughs> I knew you'd say that. Well, there, uh, there must be uh, something to do. I just uh, feel so guilty just sitting here, like I'm cheating the country. <laughs> you want to go bowling or something? I can't. I lent Lady Bird my ball. <laughs> what are the Rusks doing? They're always entertaining. We could call them and you could feel them out. I'll call. Mr. Rush, please. The President of the United States. <laughs> uh, 
ta chi ta ta chi ta chi ta chi ta 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 chi ta hello dean no no it's uh, not an emergency not a big one well i wanted to uh, know uh, what's going on there i hear noises and laughter oh a party isn't that nice the rusks are having a party jackie <laughs> i was just uh, telling jackie that you were having a party yes uh, she's here here with me we're uh, home alone tonight just the two of us she and i no one else alone the two of us what what did i call about oh it's uh, not important i'll discuss it with you on monday yes thanks oh and dean if if you get any uh, political questions that you can't answer be sure and call me because i'm not going anywhere <laughs> jackie and i will be home alone goodbye i'll tell you what Let's call up for a pizza. I can't do that. I can't uh, call up and say this is the president of the United States. Send up a sausage pizza. Just to... Don't tell them who you are. Just tell them to send it to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. I don't know if I can do that. Well, let's do something. I don't want to stay home. I'm sick and tired of staying home and staring at these same 100 walls. <laughs> Hello? Oh, hello, Elsa. It's Elsa Maxwell, Jackie. What? You're having a uh, party and you wonder if by any remote chance we uh, happen to be free. Free? Jackie and I on a Saturday night? You know, Elsa, sometimes I wonder about you. We're uh, having our own party. Can't you hear it? Jackie, laugh it up. <laughs> hear that, Elsa? <laughs> that Adlai, uh, he's uh, such a cutie. He always makes Jackie laugh. <laughs> just, uh, just a minute. Uh, yes, sir, thank you. I will have some more champagne and uh, fill the Maharaja of Baroda's glass. Don't forget the Maharini. Oh, oh, Elcher, I uh, have to hang up. Uh, the Humphreys and Goldwaters are at it again. <laughs> Goodbye, Elcher, and thanks for thinking of us. Pass me the uh, magazine section of the Times. I'm doing the puzzle, darling. Oh, then give me the uh, book review section. Isn't it nice being here alone on a Saturday night? Just the two of us for a change. Should old acquaintance be forgot? And never brought to mind. All right, uh, Jackie, you take it here. Should all the great <laughs> be forgot and days of old length? All right, uh, Caroline, now you come in. For all length, my dear. Everybody take it uh, together with vigor. We'll take a cup of kindness yet for all All right, all right. Now let's remember the number to call in New York is El Dorado. <laughs> Yes, uh, go to sleep now, Caroline. Uh, Daddy uh, tucked you in, and you've had uh, three glasses of water. Now, good night. Tell me a story, Daddy. Oh, come on, sweetheart. It's uh, late. Just one short story, Daddy? Oh, all right. Uh, just one. Tell me my favorite story. Uh, about the tall man? Yes, with all the hair. Well, there was this uh, tall man with, with a, a lot, lot of hair. hair. And uh, he was prince and a great warrior. And the people of his country uh, picked him to be their leader because he could uh, protect them and lead them on to the uh, new frontiers. <laughs> Tell me about when he had the trouble. Well, uh, Caroline, first he had the trouble with the steel duke, and then all the uh, money lords. 
Then all the uh, money lords uh, gave him trouble, and then all the other lords wanted to uh, take his uh, job away. But when he talked, everyone uh, believed him, and he remained as their leader. Now, one day, the evil prince with the black beard from the island in the south and the... Uh, <laughs> The terrible fat bear from the cold north came and they tried to hurt the prince. But the prince was too smart and he chased them away. So the handsome prince and all the people of his country lived happily ever after. Oh, I was scared. But hooray for the prince. And thank you, Daddy. Good right. night. Good night, uh, Caroline. Good night. <sighs> These sessions do him so much good. <laughs> We take you now to Washington, D.C. for a special announcement. Good evening. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Richard Nixon for making this whole thing possible. <laughs> Yeah, do you really think this will work? Well, we all feel that it will, sir. After all, we've done the press conference on TV in the afternoon for a long time now, and we thought it would be a nice change of pace if we did it in the evening. And, of course, more people watch at night, sir. Well, that uh, sounds reasonable. But I don't know about these changes you've suggested. Well, it's different in the evening, Mr. President. We've got to dress it up a bit. Well, okay, Pierre, let's try it once. On the air in ten seconds. Stand by! Live from the White House in Washington, D.C. Presenting an evening with J.F.K. Press conference is on the air. Questions and answers from everywhere. From the common market to Medicare. Your press conference is on the air. Yes, well, let me say... No, no, not yet, Jack. Famous newsmen are on the scene. They're left or right or they're in between. From the New York Times to Playboy Magazine. Famous newsmen are on the scene. Yes, let me say Jack, this tonight. not yet. This press conference is aimed at you. With world crises both fresh and new. How sweet it is. <laughs> First question, how about you, the gentleman in the rear? Yes, sir, I'd like to ask. Louder, I can't hear. Now, there's a rumor going round about young Caroline, your daughter. She had another birthday. What is it that you bought her? We like to keep young Caroline on an even keel. We bought her an Erector set, Bethlehem Steel. The newsman that is seated there with him, I will ad lib. I can tell from his evil eye, he's from the Herald Trail. Sir, there is a question the nation wants to know. Would you tell us, have you seen your wife's great TV show? I haven't as yet seen my wife's TV extravaganza. How can I when it's always on opposite Bonanza? There's a lady reporter whose questions haunt me like the Asian plague. Fasten your seat belts, ladies and gents. Here is Mrs. Craig. In 1964? 
If I were living in New York, he'd be my candidate. It's the only way I know to get him out of New York State. Well, that's the way it is, my friends, the end of this week's show. And now I'd like to say one thing before I have to go. I have had a wonderful time answering in rhythm and rhyme. Your questions have been really sublime, so I've had a wonderful time. This has been a wonderful night, funnier than an evening with Dwight. And I feel like Huntley or Walter Cronkite. This has been a wonderful night. Now let me say, say, now let me shout, shout. I don't know what all this is about, I confess, it's a mess, but it was either do this or get out, my advisors uh, tell me to say, thanks my friends, you've really been grand, now I'd like an American hand. For Lyndon Johnson, who backs me with his band, this is really, really, really and grand. We're a little late, folks, so good night. This program has been brought to you by the United States Kennedy Corporation, makers of presidents, attorney generals, and senators. Jackie, I've got a big surprise for you. Surprise? Well, it's September 12th, 1958. It's our fifth wedding anniversary, and I found something I think you like. What is it? Tell me. Well, it's a house I want you to look at. <laughs> meet, me, uh, meet me at three in front of the 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Our fifth anniversary, and he remembered... I'm a lucky girl, married to such a thoughtful young senator from Massachusetts. I had better hurry if I'm going to be there by three. Hello, Jack. Hello, Jackie. I'd like you to meet the renting agent, Mr. Paul Butler. <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Butler? It's a pleasure meeting you. Well... There's your house. How do you like it? Oh, it certainly is nice and large. Yes, it's, uh, it's beautiful. Oh, no, wait a minute. That's the Pentagon. <laughs> you see, over there, that's the house I'm renting. The white one with the columns. Oh. You'll like it. I know you will. It's an excellent condition. You see, for six years now, the only tenants have been an elderly couple. <laughs> a retired general and his wife. Is there room for children, a horse, dogs, and nursemaids? Oh, we'll make room. We'll tear out the putting green. <laughs> and sure, one more thing. Is there a uh, Catholic church nearby? <laughs> well, no, not at the moment. There's never been a call for one. <laughs> what about shopping? Oh, yes. There's a shopping center that includes a shoe repair shop, a drug store, a movie house, and a large supermarket. Where is it located? In the West Wing. <laughs> well, it uh, sounds good to me. Well, of course, we'll need two references from responsible people. <laughs> you do know two responsible people. Uh, certainly. There's, uh, there's my, uh, my brother Bobby and there's my brother Teddy. Yes, well, what do they do? Well, it's not what they do now that counts. It's what they're going to be doing if I take this house. <laughs> Please, you really should take it. Well, what do you say? What do you think, Jackie? If it's really what you want, dear. Well, how long a lease do we get, Mr. Butler? Uh, four years. But if you like, I think I can get it for four more. All right, I'll uh, take it on one condition. Well, what's that, sir? I want an option to buy. <laughs> the 
Gentlemen of the Secret Service, <clears throat> I have called the 36 of you together because of a very distressing situation. Uh, no, 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 quiet, 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 please. Uh, I want this thing cleared up now. I don't mean later, I mean right now. Uh, you hand-picked agents have been in charge of Caroline since the beginning, and you have distinguished yourselves one way or another. Now, suddenly, a blot on the department record. Agent Schwartz, rise. You, Agent Schwartz, are in trouble. Uh, Schwartz, you've been accused and found guilty of an unforgivable action. Unfortunately for all of us, Agent Schwartz, four of Caroline's young friends caught you smoking while you were dressed in your howdy duty suit. <laughs> Agent Schwartz, the repercussions of your act will not be stilled for many a year, and it is only right and proper that your punishment be meted out by your own colleagues gathered here. Sir, I'm prepared to take my punishment, whatever it may be. Men, are you ready? Yes, we are. All right, men, give it to him! Shame on Agent Schwartz! Shame on Agent Schwartz! What is it, Pierre? Why are we stopping? Well, I don't know, sir. There's a man up ahead flagging us down. Howdy, gentlemen. Welcome to Akula County. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, if you will uh, just tell us what the trouble is, we're kind of in a hurry. Well, the trouble is you're in too much of a hurry. You have exceeded the speed limit, and thereby you have broken the law. Excuse me, Sheriff, but this is the President of the United States. Well, it's a very great honor to meet you, sir, and welcome you to Akula County, and you're under arrest. Now, look, sir, we're in a hurry to get to Camp David. And these 67 cars are filled with dignitaries, and uh, we must move ahead with vigor. Well, I'm afraid not. They're under arrest, too. Pierre, get on the car phone and call the mayor. Yes, sir. You can go and call the mayor, but he's not in his office. Where is he? Uh, speaking. All right, let's... Uh... Get to court and get this over with. We're really in a hurry. Well, if you're in that much of a hurry, I guess I can accommodate you. This court is now in session. <laughs> Judge Harlow Tompkins presiding. You have been brought before this court on charges of speeding by Sheriff Harlow Tompkins. How do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Well, I suppose you people could stay at my boarding house while we're getting together a jury. It's fishing season. Everybody's up in the mountains. <laughs> I ought to be back in a week or so. I... Never mind, never mind. Guilty. What is the fine? We really Gentlemen, must go. Gentlemen, you made a wise choice. Now, let's see. That's uh, 67 cars <laughs> at $10 a piece. That's uh, $670. Pierre, uh, pay him and let's get out of here. Well, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, sir, but I don't have that much cash with me. Adlai? Sorry, Mr. President. I don't have it, I'm afraid. Gentlemen, that's $670, please. Well, that's ridiculous. Six, six, seven. Uh, sir, would you mind letting me talk to him? Well, Ev, it isn't uh, necessary. Six, seven. I think, sir, that if at this particular time you examine the situation, sir, you will six find... Six, eighty. Ev, you... <laughs> you did it again. How about a check, sir? Well, the only place you could get a check cash would be the bank, and it's closed. Well, let's uh, call the president of the bank and ask him to open the bank. Where do I find the bank president? Speaking. <laughs> Look, sir, I've got Prime Minister McMillan and General de Gaulle waiting for me at uh, Camp David. If you will uh, permit us to go on to Camp David, I will get $680 and send it back to you by uh, special messenger. Well, I don't want you to think I don't trust you, but my mind would be considerably eased if you would leave one man behind as security. Now, I keep a nice, clean jail. I don't think he'd mind too much. Pierre, I guess you'll... Uh, well, sir, uh, I, I can't possibly stay. I've got all, those, all the notes. Yes, that's right. Uh, how about you, Adlai? I'm supposed to discuss the UN proposals. Yes, of course. How about you, Dirksen? Well, sir, I suppose at this particular time it would be That's possible. 690. <laughs> You, I guess you'd better come with us, yeah. We can't afford to leave you here. 
Well, how about, how about that uh, army private standing over there? Well, he's supposed to carry the flag, sir. Oh, we'll have somebody else carry the flag and leave the private here. Now, who's going to carry the flag? Well, I guess I can. Thank, Thank you, you, Linton. <laughs> Now, baby John, you sit there and play, and I'll go down and warm up your bottle. <laughs> now, be a good boy. That's right, honey. That's right. I'll be back in just a moment. I have the White House on the line. Is Mr. Khrushchev ready to speak? Yes. Can you do Kennedy. Hello, this is Premier of Soviet Union, Khrushchev here. I got no time for hello, how are you? Listen, Kennedy, I'm calling you directly to tell you I have signed pact with Castro. I intend to back him the limit. Now you stay out of Cuba because I am behind Fidel 100%. USSR are behind me. Red China is behind me. And I tell you now, we will not back down. Don't you be so nasty. I mean what I say. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Castro is my friend and you and your government are not going to push us around. Goodbye. Vladimir. The Premier. Tell Fidel, get the missiles out of Cuba. I never heard Kennedy so angry. Believe me, Jack, you'll enjoy this. Jackie, I know Mr. Casal is a uh, great cellist. But really, you know how I feel about this kind of music. I know, but I want you to try and enjoy it tonight. And this time you can't leave either. We're right here in the front row, and it would be embarrassing. Oh, uh, all right, Jackie. Charles, wake up, please. Delicious was. I'm the first daughter of the first family of the first country in the world. But I'm really only a kid, an average 
English American kid. Next year I'll be six. <laughs> Mr. Khrushchev's head was large and bald, and one night there was rain. We couldn't find a hat for him. It really was a pain. Daddy's hat was much too small, and Uncle Ted's too big. So what did I do? Why, naturally, I gave him Mommy's wig. It was my Peggy Lee wig. <laughs> She's maturing. <laughs> I sat at Daddy's desk one day while he talked on the phone. I sat there by myself a while and ate an ice cream cone. The ice cream flipped right off the top. It really was a mess. Do you remember Daddy's famous chocolate State of the Union address? Oh, she's the first Daughter of the first Family of the first Country in the world But she's really only a kid A simple, usual, normal, everyday Average American Jackie and I and Caroline moved into the White House. Now, Jackie made a few changes, and it turned out beautifully, I thought. My, uh, my first big test came, of course, with the steel industry, as, as you may recall. Now, this brought me many problems. Am I going too fast for you? No, no, no. Go right ahead. Then, of course, there was Cuba and the Medicare program, with which I'm still having a uh, great deal of trouble, but I am confident that I will eventually work it out to everyone's just satisfaction. Now, I'd, I'd like to tell you about my strategy for my presidential campaign for 1964. Well, would you mind telling me about it tomorrow? Why? Because I'm afraid your hour is up, Mr. Meter, and I've got another patient waiting. <laughs> Forward, march! <laughs> Hot two, three, and four, hot two, this I like. Hot two, three, and four, this is your 50 mile hike. Come on, lift your knees, hey, yeah, how you feeling? Get me a taxi, please. Bobby Kennedy, how you doing, Robert? Ted is carrying me. Mile four, 50 mile hike. One, two, three, and four. Jackie, don't you frown. Hiking's really easy. Not in an evening gown. It's me, Caroline! Mile six, 50 mile hike! One, two, three, and four! Five hours out of town, how's my baby John? Our uh, pants fell down! Mile seven, 50 mile hike! Three, one, seven miles! Killing me. How much left to go? Only four 
43. Come on, keep on marching, Jackie. My dear spouse, I quit. You take over, she, you back in the house. Yeah, she move ahead, driver. Move ahead with bigger. <laughs> See uh, the tax bill. Send him in. I'm from the Internal Revenue Service, and I'm here to investigate the 1962 tax return of Mr. John F. Kennedy. <laughs> uh, he was here just a few minutes ago. I, I just don't, just don't know where he could have gone. I'll get right to the point. How much did you make last year? You know, he was as close to me as you are now. <laughs> I just don't know where he could have disappeared please, sir, to us. Please, sir, please, sir, your 1962 return? Oh, yes, my 1962 return, certainly. I made... Uh, what do presidents get? $100,000 a year. So that's where the 100000 came from. <laughs> it's a funny thing, Jackie and I were going over the household budget. There was, there was this 100000 we couldn't account for. <laughs> Now, what can I do for you? Are you salaried or self-employed? Salaried, for the moment. <laughs> okay, now let's check your deductions. Under medical expenses, I see you have 23 rocking chairs. Now, you must admit, sir, 23 rocking chairs is a bit much. Let's settle for eight. Ten. Nine. That's a deal. <laughs> now, you, uh, you show restaurant bills here for $371,000 and only $3 in tips. I'm from New England. Well, I never thought of that, yeah. Now, let's see about your itemized list of travel deductions. Uh, Washington to Palm Beach to Washington to Hyannisport to Washington to Palm Beach to Washington to Hyannisport to Washington. Yes, but you'll notice the next day I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> And the rest of your return has the same extravagant claims. Now, I ask you, sir, put yourself in my position. To get a return like this is to laugh, sir. <laughs> I laugh, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh -huh. This is no laughing matter. <laughs> You are in trouble with the United States government. According to these figures, which you yourself put down, you show a total income of $100,000, and your deductions amount to $2,348,617.83. How about that? <laughs> Sir, I I'm going to lay it on the line. You have obviously not reported all of your income for 1962. Now, we at the Bureau are well aware that you just sold over four million albums. You, s you sir, are the biggest selling president of all time. No, but uh, just a moment, Mr. Foster. That wasn't my album. <laughs> oh, isn't that wonderful? <laughs> yes. Four million albums and it hasn't gone to your head. Well, if it wouldn't be troubling you too much, would you, uh, well, could you... Uh, well, could you do one line from the album for me? The rubber swan line. <laughs> you know, the rubber swan is mine. That, that, that uh, look, look, I, I tell you, I didn't do that line. Uh, you do own a rubber swan, do you? Well, uh, yes, I do. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But I, I didn't make that album. <laughs> no, of course you didn't. Of course you didn't. But <laughs> right, look, there are just the two of us. Uh, do the line. Nobody will hear. Go ahead. Go ahead. You, uh, you, 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 you really want to hear me do it? <laughs> I would, I would love to hear you do it, yeah. 
Well, I've only done it once or twice. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> the rubber swan is mine. Well, I guess you didn't make the album. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry to have bothered you. I'm afraid I've made a mistake. Thank you, and good afternoon. The rubber swan is mine. No? I said, the rubber swan. Is... No, that's not it. I... Jackie, will you bring out that silly album again? <laughs> Well, it's, it's good to get out of the house sometimes. Yes, and I hear it's a wonderful movie. It's opening tonight, you know. Yes, I, I hear the picture costs millions. Oh, we're approaching the theater now, sir. Sure, be here. Okay, give me eight men on the left. My little man supposed to be coming right through here. Come on, behind the rope. Charlie, get that fellow slipping under the rope. Come on, let's go, fellow. Don't be a wise guy. Oh, hey! Back. Oh, isn't she beautiful? Jack, this is terrible. The crowd's pushing and shoving. Well, Jackie, what's the sense in kidding? It's part of the penalty of being in the public eye. Ah, quit shoving. I'm not shoving. He's pushing me. I'm not pushing. We want to see Elizabeth Taylor just as much as you do. <laughs> Pierre, I, uh... Just don't think this is going to work. That's the 48th boy we've interviewed. Not one of them makes any sense. Well, I'm terribly sorry, sir, but we've gotten the most eligible kids in Washington. Now, Caroline has her heart set on going to this birthday party. We've just got to find an escort for her. Well, there's only one more, sir. Well, we might as well see him. Send him in. But I doubt he'll work out. Send that young man in, please. How do you do, young man? I'm fine, sir. <laughs> Thank you for asking, sir. And may I say, it is an historic moment for me to stand in the shadow of a man who single-handedly challenged and defeated the largest steel organization in the world. Pierre, I like this boy. <laughs> sir, when your intermediaries approach me and bid me to appear before you to be interviewed for this pleasurable mission, I felt the same trepidation that you must feel when faced with a fist of critical and a hostile Congress. But with the inspiration instilled in me by a brilliant treatise, Profiles in Courage, I stilled my quaking heart and came here to face you, oh brave leader. Something, uh, something tells me that you and Caroline are going to have a lot in uh, common. I trust my gift of flowers to your daughter was not too presumptuous. And sir, may I assure you that my chauffeur is her chauffeur. Her wish, my command. My humble life at her disposal. You see, sir, I am building my entire life on the magnificent image which you have created. Pierre, tell Caroline to get dressed. <laughs> Young man, you may escort Caroline to the party. My heartfelt gratitude, sir. By the way, uh, what is your name, lad? Barry Goldwater, Jr. <laughs> now, Mr. Khrushchev, uh, I hope you've enjoyed your stay in our country. My uh, fellow Americans certainly wish you a uh, safe journey home. Oh, yeah, I'll bet you do. <laughs> Mr. Khrushchev, I hope you enjoyed the parade in your honor this afternoon. Confetti with rocks? Oh, some parade. 
two Volkswagens and a bicycle. <laughs> my, uh, my brother Bobby asked that you extend his felicitations to your people. The brother de verde, brother in the business, huh? Uh, <laughs> Mr. Khrushchev, your political views are your own and you are entitled to them. When you bring my family into the conversation, you're going too far, sir. We got better attorney general. We got better Peace Corps. We got better actor than Peter Lawfer. We got better doctor than Ben Casey. You don't know how to run this country. You ought to let me help you run it. Nikki, please, I'd rather do it myself. Now, fellas, I call the meeting of the three of us because there is a family matter that needs discussion. When I went into politics some years ago, I did not mind that the two of you decided to go into the same business. However, there is uh, one problem that has been created as a result. Now, I'm the older brother, and I had this voice first. <laughs> and I do believe that you two should find your own voices uh, just like I did. Now, just a minute, Jack. Uh, I don't see any similarity uh, at all. I have to admit, uh, Jack, that B Bobby's absolutely right. I don't see any similarity either. <laughs> Something must be done. Now, Bobby, it might uh, just be a matter of a change of a few words. You know, for instance, let's take a word like vigor. I say vigor. How do you say vigor? Vigor. <laughs> you see, you say vigor the way I say vigor. <laughs> now, instead of saying uh, vigor, why don't you say uh, vigor? <laughs> vigor. <laughs> Good, Bobby. You see, the trick is to take uh, take the edge off the voice. The change should be uh, significant. For instance, uh, try this famous sentence of mine. Let me say this about that. Do not ask what your country can do for you. Ask rather what you can do for your country. Why, let me make a judgment on that. <laughs> Judy, Judy, do not ask what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Yes, that's very good, Bobby. Perfect. Now you've got a uh, brand new voice. Okay, Teddy, uh, you try it. All right, you guys. Let me make a judgment on that. Do not ask what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. <laughs> now no one's going to say you're copying, Teddy. You're great, just perfect. Yeah, let me make a judgment on that. Do not ask what your country can do for you. Ask rather what you can do for your country. Cut it out, Jackie. <laughs> Jackie, where's baby John? I want to talk to him. Jack, I wish you'd stop calling him baby John. After all, he's 35 years old. Now. 35. Yes, it is 1996, isn't it? Here we are, retired in our little Palm Beach cottage in Iannis Port. 1996. How long ago was it that I was president? Four years. It's, it's been a good, rich life for all of us, don't you think, dear? Yes, dear. I certainly enjoyed being president. Bobby enjoyed being president. <laughs> Teddy enjoyed being president. <laughs> and then I enjoyed being president again. Whatever happened to that funny little chubby man? You know, the Russian you had so much trouble with. Oh, you mean Nicky? <laughs> Well, he's fine. I hear from him all the time since he defected to West Germany over the Berlin Wall. <laughs> oh, by the way, you haven't forgotten we're having a uh, family reunion next Thursday. Oh, yes. Where are we all getting together? Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Madison Square Garden. Well, it's, it's only for the immediate family. <laughs> That'll be nice. Well, I guess... The high point of our life is really tomorrow, isn't it? 
Yes, I'm so excited. Just think, Caroline's coronation. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, today's political world is complex, confusing, and bewildering. In an effort to give you a better understanding of the issues and the answers, we looked for the truth, and we found it. What you are about to hear is an actual recording made by Vaughn Meter at the Alexander Robertson School on 95th Street in Central Park West in New York City. The experts are members of the second, third, and fourth grades. Do you know who I am? Yes. Who am I? You're not the president, but you're the imitator. Who's the president? President Kennedy. What does President Kennedy do? Write letters. Inspect Cuba. Talks to Khrushchev. What do you think the president does? Go ahead. Find papers and all that junk. The president's a politician. I don't believe it. Why, what would you do if you were president? I'd sit in bed all day. What would you do if you were president? I'd send people to jail. Don't think it'd be good to be president? I think it would, but huh? I'd say it's I don't, because stuff. everybody crowds, or, crowds around you. Yeah, and, and it gets tiring. Yeah, everybody crowds around you, and you have to always talk, and, yeah. and you feel like fainting. Are you a Democrat or a Republican, Jasmine? <laughs> a Democrat? Why do you think you're a Democrat and not a Republican? I belong to the United States. Are you a Democrat or a Republican? I make things fly. Are you a Democrat or a Republican? Democrat. You're a Democrat? What's the difference? I don't know that. What's the difference between a Democrat and a Republican? Um, President Kennedy was a Democrat and I just, I didn't remember. What's the difference between a Democrat and a Republican? One's fat, one's thin. Yeah. <laughs> You're all three Democrats. Why is that better than being a Republican? Because I'm one. Does your daddy pay ta taxes? Yeah, my family's a taxpayer, but my kitten isn't. Who do you suppose is the greatest man in the world? The president. And who do you think? My father. And who do you think? Jesus. All of you know Governor Rockefeller. What do you think a governor does all day? Collect income tax. How many hours do you suppose a governor works in one day? Twelve. How many hours does the president work? Twenty-four. How many do you think Mayor Wagner works a day? Six. Who knows who Mr. Nixon is? Go the ahead. former president. How many hours do you think Nixon works? He doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. Why doesn't Nixon work? He's sad because he didn't become the president. <laughs> How much money would you like to make in a week? Well, about $110. How much money would you like to make a week? I'd like to make a thousand billion hundred trillion dollars in a minute. Who do you think makes that much money? Rockefeller. 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 Uh, what is a communist? Somebody who's not free. Do you like Nikita Khrushchev? Yeah. You know who Fidel Castro is? The um, premier from Cuba. Mm -hmm. Do you like him? I've never seen him. Do you know who Mr. Castro is? He's the leader of Cuba. What does he look like? He's bald headed. Do you know who F Fidel Castro is? A Martian. He's a terrible. He's, uh, he, he He's was, a bad uh, boy. He, How many other presidents can you name? Uh, um, oh, George Washington. That's right. Washington, Lincoln, Truman. Um, <laughs> Eisenhower Kennedy. Yeah. yeah. Who do you think was the best one? President. I mean, Kennedy. <laughs> Kennedy. 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 And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which my colleagues, as you well know, are blindfolded. Are those blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes. Yes, yes John. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger <laughs> and sign in, please? All right. 
As you know, panel, different form of questioning now. One question at a time in turn, moving clockwise. And we'll begin with uh, Arlene Francis. Would your name be in if we had newspapers in the theatrical section of the paper? Yes, ma'am, it would. <laughs> Mr. Gable, are you a man? Yes, I should hope so for my sake, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Miss Gilgallon? Are you a comedian? Yes, I am. Mr. Sir? Are there more than one of you, President? <laughs> No, sir. That's oh. one down and nine to go, Miss Preston. Are there more than one? No. There aren't any more than yes. one. There is? No. There are. There are? There are. Yeah, what's the answer to that, John? No. Bennett asked the question, are there more than one of you? And the answer to that was no. Oh. No. Oh. Are you known primarily for your work in pictures? No, ma'am. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Okay. Gable. Are you known for your recordings? <laughs> yes, sir. Gilgallan? Um, are you a health faddist? <laughs> well, I wish I was. <laughs> the answer to that is no. Three thousand seven to go, Mr. Sir. Have you recently had a record that is sold in the millions? Yes, sir. Are you oh, one meter? Yes, sir. Yeah. record that is sold in the millions indeed. In fact, I heard it for the umpteenth time only two nights ago, and got us laughed as hard last time. I'm sorry, John. I had him last week, but he wasn't here. <laughs> but he wasn't here. I'm time. sorry I was late. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Meter, aren't you going to appear at the President's New Year's Eve party in Palm Beach? Uh, no. I have had no warning. <laughs> <laughs> I have had no warning. No, actually, you're presently appearing at the Blue Angel. Yes, and I'm uh, scheduled to appear there tomorrow. So, and he's got a concert at Carnegie Hall on the 5th, which is Saturday. Saturday the 5th. This is with the whole no. troupe of the album troupe, First Family Troupe. Uh, oh, is there anything great. that you would like to say about the coming year? <laughs> well, I just hope the coming year is as nice to everyone as this one has been to me. I'd like you to That's say nice it in English. another native tongue that we're familiar with. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, regard it as a uh, personal favor to me if this coming year was uh, as nice to everyone as it has been to uh, myself and the whole family. <laughs> I think Arlene probably has takes a great deal of, of uh, very personal pleasure in your tremendous success because we're both Bostonians in a way. I'm yeah. actually out of South Africa, but I got to. <laughs> I got That's to Boston. That's one way to Boston. Hey, I, uh, <laughs> just to say the pleasure of being on the show, and especially, uh, I guess, the, uh, a great deal of uh, kindness to me was shown in the earlier portions of my career a little while back by Miss Kilgallen's on. Happy to be here and see her here. Thank you, Vaughn. I'm proud of you. Thank you very much. But I'll be glad to take part in the helping you in the latter part of your career. <laughs> <laughs> now that we're both older. <laughs> but you know, actually, Vaughn is two Bostonians because you were born right in the city, weren't you? Well, I was actually born in Maine. Uh, in Maine? Whereabouts in Maine? Waterville. Waterville. Oh, it's a fine town. Yeah. I just kept moving so much that. Uh, I guess I call every part of New England my home, from Boston up. Well, I went to school in New Hampshire, up at Chilton, but I you know, still think of myself as a Bostonian. I spent more time in New Hampshire than I did in Massachusetts. Well, one thing that I wanted to ask, let me hear you say, um, Virginia. Virginia. That's the boy, the good Bostonian. That's what I, that's the habit I picked up there, the speech habit, which uh, you take off so well yourself. But you do it normally when you talk, you put E-R endings on A ending words. I, th I think so, I, uh... <clears throat> I have to just back up a little bit and put, make it a little more ER than I naturally Than do. you would naturally. Yeah. Well, again, we are very happy for you and your great success in 1962. John, can I ask Vaughn one question? Yeah. About how many of those records do you calculate have been sold by this time? Right. Somebody told me it's over three and a half million. Is that right? I think it's just over four now. Four million? Oh. Wow. <laughs> well, 
All I've got to say, uh, Mr. Kennedy, I mean, Mr. Meter, is that's four million votes, and you can run for office this way pretty soon. Thanks a lot for being with us, and much luck with your Carnegie Hall concert, Lawrence. Nice Thank to you hear you're going to be there. Thank you. Nice to meet you.